I was honestly thinking you know, it was going to be an easy fight. I was thinking that you know I was going to go in there and walk through him. But really, you don't really know what it's like until you're in there, you know. And it's we were both, you know, in the blind. That fight, it was like being in the blender. He didn't get in that blender with Polly. I put him in that blender. Jay's might be winning that fight. That's the end of the story. I hope he's ready. You know, when I'm on the card, there's going to be fire. You know, there's going to be blood everywhere. There's going to be teeth flying. See a target. I see my opponent. I know I have to get my hands on him. This is going to be a hard fight. We're gonna crash like titans and see what happens, you know? And it's just hard, you know, who who will say, right, enough, I want out, or will you say, no, I want some more, I'm here till death. I started out fighting at 14, and you know, just started out as something I love to do. Never ever thought in a million years I'd make a career out of it. I thought, you know, maybe I'll get less charges pressed. You know, if I can, if I can fight somebody and they're not pressed charges. Uh, so that, you know, that's kind of how I started out, just training in my backyard, me, my brother, and a couple buddies. I caught a charge whenever I was like 17, almost 18. Wound up, you know, I go to prison when I turned 20 years old. Oh God, yeah, my mom, man. At first, she, she went from mad to, you know, now she's supposed to lose her little boy. You know, I, I, I'm the baby of the family. I'm the fourth born child, and I'm a mama's boy through and through, still to this day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I love my mom. You know, I felt, I felt horrible about it, but at the same time, I knew she had my back the whole way through it. I put my whole family through that. It wasn't just me who went there and did that time. My mama, she did every day with me, day for day. She was there with me. You know, she, I guarantee you, she cried a thousand times more than I did. Right or wrong, I'm always gonna have his back. I might not like it, and I'm gonna tell you, you know, you messed up. You know, fix this. You knew better. You know, it's, you're you're the one in control of this. So don't even come crying to me because you messed up. You messed up. I told you better. I taught you better. Having to de deliver him to the, uh, to the uh, courthouse and them take him away in handcuffs and it was hard. That is the most helpless feeling that a mom could ever feel when there's, you see your son, you know, handcuffed and taken away. Even as bad as it was, I think it was a good thing for him because it brought him down a notch because he thought that, you know, he was young. And when you're young, you think, oh, yeah, I'm so big and bad and I'm tough, I can handle anything, no matter what. I get out and the dream never died, you know, it's right back to it. Like my original town that I was born in is called Zavolgia, <clears throat> and it's only a small little town, and it's like very, the crime was, crazy high in that town. And everything that was used to be owned by Soviet Union, which was everything, all the factories, everything used to be state owned. And suddenly it's no one's, you know, so there's, the country was in this war for everything. You know, there was people getting shot everywhere. You know, there was no Conor McGregor, you know, to set the example that you can go into sports and become a, a huge star. You know, there was very little of that at that time. The only guys driving nice cars and all were those guys, you know, the mafia guys, the guys, the criminals, you know, so, in all of our heads, we're like, well, this is, this is what we need to aim for because, you know, we don't want to live poor, you know, we want to be successful. And that seems to be the only road to success right now. Ah, we all fought, we all, like, there was fights all the time. There was, we lived that life, you know, we lived that, if you didn't live that life, you know, if you didn't try to be one of those guys, you were kind of like the geek, you know, the, the quiet guys or whatever. Like, yeah, they, they didn't maybe get involved, but to them, to us, they were uncool, you know, they, they weren't cool. You know, my mom never allowed me to do boxing or anything, but, you know, she tried to, you know, direct me in a completely different, you know, direction. I mean, she made me do ballroom dancing, but she didn't realize that only made me tougher because in that climate, to be able to do ballroom dancing and not get bullied, trust me, that required some balls. 
believe you me, people try to slag me all the time about it, you know, but I held my ground. Uh, it was a funny time, you know. Whenever, whenever they tell me I'm fighting Artem Lobov, or Artem Lobov, however you say his name, I was thinking, man, this is going to be easy. You know, this guy, I've watched him in the UFC, he's like 15, 15 and one, you know, he's horrible. The very first punch of the round, I throw a punch, he, he, he slips it and hits me with a good punch. After that, all the technique in the world went out the window and it was time to fight, you know, and I just, that's what I did. I, I, got, I got into that slugfest with him, went to brawling and thinking I'm gonna put him away before he puts me away. But you know, it, it was it was hard. It was hard to put him away. The dude's tough. I give him you know all the credit in the world. He's got heart. He's got you know toughness. He's got a chin. You know, you can't take none of that from him. Everybody told me that he wouldn't know box. You know, and I wish I was like, oh, I'm stubborn. I'm gonna teach him how to box. I'm gonna fight from the outside. He then he did good for a minute, the first round. But then Artem lured him into that that battle. You know, we was trying to coach strategy until about the third round, and we were like. Oh, Throw that out the door. Let's just motivate. Let's just uh, let's get, get pull the Rocky speech out of our pockets. If uh, we wouldn't have had Stitch Duran there, Jason, I don't know how to fix. I'm not on that level. I can't fix cuts like that. Dear God, he had 12 cuts on his face. I thought he had 10 cuts. He had 12. <laughs> I, I tell you what, man, uh, they were both gladiators, you know. And just to uh, see the volume of cuts that Jason Knight had every time he came back into the corner, I had another one, but. Yeah, it should be fight of the year, man, for all sports. We had a plan together before he went out. And we actually stuck to the plan. The plan went, according, everything went clockwise. Till you got to the fourth round, he got a bit tired. Because he wasn't expecting to be thrown as so many punches. And Jason was going to be such a hard opponent. When Jason kept getting up, he was in a war. When Ashton went into that actual fourth round, when he actually came to the corner, and if you, you'd have to listen to the video. When he comes in and the, the, the very last uh, fourth round, and he says to me, I'm glad that fight's over. I said, it's not over. I said, you've another round to go here. And that killed me. I remember I sat down on my stool and said, one more round. I was like, what? one more round? Are you serious? Fucking hell. I was just like exhausted and like blood was everywhere. And my hands were in so much pain. They were literally in agony. I could just see blood dribbling, all, dripping off my hands. I saw big gashes. They were all swollen already, just starting to swell up. And I, could, I couldn't even like barely close my fist. I was like, oh my God. But then the bell would ring and I just, you know, make a fist and just write, let's just keep throwing them as hard as I can. I was supposed to work my angles. I was supposed to keep my distance. I was, you know, supposed to slip some of his punches. I was supposed to keep my hands up. But, you know, I, instead I, I stood right there flat footed, marched my way forward. And if I was going forward, I was flat footed, crossing my feet, throwing bombs. If I was going backwards, I was flat footed, crossing my feet, throwing bombs. I wasn't trained that way. I was trained to do a whole lot better than that. But, uh, you know, stuff happens. And I hope that's not what happens again for me. Not just for Jason, but Jason's mama, dear God, she was a mess after that. The next two days, I cried. It was traumatic to watch as a mom. You know, traumatic to see that, the effects of his face afterwards. I mean, little cut stitches. He's been having stitches since he was a little bitty boy. Broken bones, that's nothing. But this was a whole nother, another level. And I mean, it, 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 it kind of got to me. So I couldn't like stop the tears. And I felt like feeling inside I wanted to stop the fight. Like, is there any way I can stop the fight right now? I don't, I don't want this to go any, go anymore. I start to, I, it's horrible, I start to hate everyone around me that's in this room, thinking these are all here paying in here to sit, to watch like my boyfriend as entertainment and this is so hard to watch. This was the fight of his entire career. I don't like the outcome of seeing the brutality of my son, but I'll support him to the day I die, you know, just because that's, this is his dream. I'm, I'm his mom. I'm supposed to support him no matter what. Well, I think Jason's, what would you say? He's a warrior. He's a fighter. And that's, you have to respect the fighter. The two of them went in, they exchanged some fantastic blows. And the respect they had for each other after they came out of the ring and still do have for each other. And now they're gonna go in and they're gonna have a knock off each other. And the both of them respect each other. You don't hear any trash talk between them. They know what they're expecting of each other. They know they're going in there and they're gonna have a really hard knock. When Artem fought Polly, Jason was there, supporting Artem, backing him up. Even though they, they had a fight together, 
Jason's after losing, and now they're gonna have another fight. So Jason, you have to admit it, he's, he's a nice lad. He does his job, he gets in, he trains hard, and he fights. And that's what he does. And he's not bad melting anybody. So the two of them and him, I'm actually kind of glad to see them fighting in a way, and then I'm not. Because they've got great, great respect for each other. But look, Artem promised them this fight. So look, we're both in it. We get in, we do the job, see who comes out on top. Artem, he's an awesome dude. He's the, pol he's the polar opposite of what I, I, I envisioned him. You know, I envisioned Artem through Conor McGregor. I figured that he was going to be that same douchebag, cocky prick, but he's the polar opposite. The whole month or so leading up to the fight, he talked a lot of trash. I talked a lot of trash back. You know, we we had no respect for each other, really. We we really didn't. I, I was thinking, you know, this guy, he's just going to be a douchebag. And then we get in there, we start cutting weight. Uh, just so happens they set us up at the same sauna. And when I walk through the door, I'm like, oh, I see him. He, he's signing up, you know, signing the little sheet to walk back in the back. He's, you know, signing his name in or whatever. And when I walk through the door, I'm like, oh my God, you know, here, here we go. Probably fixing to have it out right here. I'm thinking, I'm fixing to walk up to this guy. He's going to be a douchebag. Well, as soon as I walk in, he sees me. Oh, what's up, man? How's it going? Yeah, I, I'm you know, excited about tomorrow. I'm like, whoa. That ain't, you know, that ain't what I expected. I thought for sure he's supposed to talk crazy. Well, uh, you know, we go in there and we start cutting weight. We're cutting weight together <laughs> in the same sauna. You know, it's it's no big deal. I've done it with plenty of other fighters that I fought, and uh, you know, we're just carrying on conversation like like he's my best friend or something, like some guy I've known for years. And at the end of the day, we need each other. He is gonna be making money and so will I. His family will be fed and so will mine. So, you know, that's just from that alone comes respect. But then on top of everything, like I said, he's an extremely tough guy and a nice guy and he's got a great family, you know. So I uh, definitely was a lot different than it was with Polly, yeah. I think I just prefer if they didn't like each other because then I know I feel like if he likes him, he's gonna be a bit more easier on him. Like, I want you to hate this person so then you can win. <laughs> And I do feel after the poly fight, Artem was going back to Jason. And for me, this is a back step. Why is he not taking a step forward? In life, we don't take steps back. Well, you know what? It has to happen again. You know, and only because the fight was so close, number one. And uh, you know, forget the blood and, and, and all that. But the fight itself was was tremendous, and that represents uh, bare knuckle fighting that we have right now. I get done with the fight, I try to stay fit, you know, I, I stay, I keep that shape. Because in order for me to go to next level, well, I need to be at least on this level before I go to next level. But no, if you want to grow as a fighter, if you want to improve, then you have to build on that. I started in the sport quite late, you know, I've had my first amateur fight at the age of 24. I only started training when I was 21. So I realized that I'm behind other people. So in order to catch up, I, I try and do whatever I can. So we have five weeks on the exact plan and what we want to do. But Artem's been training since he came back out the party. We always keep that level of fitness. Always go to 75% after the fight and keep it at 75. When it's coming up to the fight, we bring it up to 90%. Two weeks before, we bring it to 100% and then we drop it to let his body relax the way in the way in week, you know? So we have the plan, the plan's already done. You know, it's not gonna be easy. Right. Uh, uh, Jason knows Artem hits very hard. Artem's hitting harder than he was. And he's fast. Us down here, we like to fight and we don't like to back up. We like to stay right in there, bomb. And I'm trying to work with him that you can land your strikes because Artem's a counter puncher, land your strikes, get him to come back and we counter the counter. So always keep in your range, get inside, throw the punches when you're done punching, get back out of range so you're not in there to get hit. Uh, I think that was a little what he did last fight. He hit those punches, land, and then stay in there and Artem would land a few as well. So and then that's when the brawl would start happening. So I just, I'm trying to work with him, get in, land your punches, get out, let him miss, come back in again. Oh, he's definitely improving. He actually comes and trains now. He used to not train. <laughs> he, he would literally have a fight lined up and not come train until like 
a month out from the fight or whatever. I like to slack, you know, I like to mud ride. Spend time with my family, do anything besides spending eight weeks in the gym. But uh, as soon as I get a fight booked, I get in there and I bust my tail, make sure that I'm ready. So he's been doing everything off raw talent. So whenever he actually puts it together and we work, he wins every one of those fights. So I don't see this being any different. When you're in camp, right, you have to have, it's a very, very strict regimen that you have to follow. You know, you have to rest at certain times, you have to train at certain times, you have to eat at certain times. Uh, and it's very not enjoyable usually, you know? Well, the baby took care of that for me because right now I wake up, I play with the baby a little bit, I, I, uh, I have my breakfast, then I go train and I just wanna come home to play with my baby again, which means I'm taking a rest again. So I eat straight away, I play with my kid, I go uh, train again and come home, play with him maybe a little bit more and then put him to bed. And that's it, and that feels great to me. That is so enjoyable for me, I love doing it. But at the same time, it keeps me in line for what I need to do. This is my normal life now, and, and it's absolutely incredible because my normal life means that I'm, I'm training and getting better all the time. And all I do is living a life that I enjoy. The guy tried to put the medal on Artem's neck. Artem snatches it off, walks over there, puts it on my neck. What does that tell you? The man, he even thought that he lost the fight himself. You know, he, can, he can say all that he wants that he thought he won, but he knew, man, I didn't deserve this medal. I'm giving it to Jason. Now with Jason, this fight, of course, I promised him a rematch, and it was a great challenge, and it was inconclusive. So let's, let's put a big fat dot on it, you know? And to me, that would be getting a finish. I want to bring back something that's historic to this country. Because if John F. Sullivan won the fourth belt in the 1800s, and it's never been in this country. That belt is in New York, in a glass case. It was won by an Irishman, but it's never, it's never been in, on, in Ireland. Puts up a belt, James won't be winning that fight. That's the end of the story. There's no way James is going to win that fight. I'll actually take it out now and I'll go in myself <laughs> to take that belt home. To bring a belt back to Ireland would be fantastic. That belt was won in Mississippi, which is, you know, Jason's hometown. Uh, and it would mean so much for me, you know, to, to win a belt, you know, like that and bring it home. I've never won any belts, you know. I, this was the first ever belt that people fought for. So for me to win that belt would mean a lot. I would bring it back to Dublin and I would sure bring it back to Moscow as well. There was a statue, um, uh, sorry, a trophy, not a statue, a little small trophy handed to John F. Sullivan uh, at the time he won the fight. And if you look at it, there's a goat on it. The actual trophy is a goat. So <clears throat> I'd like to take the belt. I'm one of them. <laughs> I kind of got it in my head that this guy's not going anywhere. I was trying at all times to get him out of there. And you know, it came very clear in my eyes, you know, that the guy looking across from me, he has no fear in him either. If we got to die in here, that's what we're going to do. If we're going to bleed to death, then that's fine. But we're, we're not giving up. This is a fight that, that gets you into gear. You know, I, I train hard for this fight because I know what, I, what to expect. I know exactly that it ain't going to be easy on that night. It's going to be crazy and I have to be ready for that. 